Hi and welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today's a really exciting video day because I'm starting a brand new project here at Garden Ninja HQ. Now you may have watched my Exploding Atom Garden series that I've been filming for the past 18 months or so and how you can turn a blank space into a fantastic wildlife friendly garden. However, a few of you have been asking about more detailed plans for wildlife gardens. Now, I know that not everybody lives with a large garden or a large plot of land, but what I'm planning to show you today is a new design as to how you can encourage wildlife, have a low fuss, low maintenance garden and help do your bit for the environment. So come on, let's get cracking. So I'm here at the top end of my garden and if I do a little bit of a spin round you'll see that up here I've got probably about a third, third of an acre worth of space. Now as I said before I know that not everyone has this amount of space and I'm really lucky to have it. What I thought I would do with this area is plant a rewilding garden so I'm going to wild up this area and give you loads of top tips along the way as to how you can take the essence and parts of this garden and implement it into your own gardens no matter what size. So even if you've got a tiny postage stamp sized garden, maybe six metres by four, I'm going to give you loads of hints and tips along the year as to how you can help encourage wildlife and more importantly reduce the maintenance in your garden by choosing specimens that are going to flower pretty much non-stop and require hardly any maintenance at all. And what's not to love about that? Now you may have seen on the news that there's been lots of issues around farming, agriculture, the fact that a lot of our land is being used for what we call monoculture, so growing one type of crop, one type of plant, and whilst it looks lovely in the summer when you've got a sea full of corn, for wildlife, birds and insects it's really poor because there's only one species uh, and it's not that diverse. So what a number of people are doing around the world is starting to rewild areas of land. So I'm lucky in that I've got this plot of land, which is my garden, and rather than just leave it as field or turn it into a formal garden, I'm going to rewild it by introducing a load of native species. So I'm going to be showing you a whole host of trees that I'm going to put in to create a woodland over years to come. I'm going to use wildflower meadows, native shrubs, and things that will flower all the way through summer without me lifting a finger to help them. So the first thing I need to do is to measure up this space and then take the ideas from my head and put them onto paper. And that's the key with design. Don't just jump straight in with a spade and plants and think that you'll be able to guess where things should go. If you draw it up on paper first, you make all your mistakes on a piece of A3, you can rub them out and start again. And by designing on paper or on a computer, you're going to get a far more considered design, you're going to miss all those obvious mistakes that you're probably going to make if you don't draw it up and you'll be able to work out things like proportion and really spend time considering plant choices. So a stitch in time is worth nine and if you can draw it up or get someone to help you draw up your design I, I can guarantee you'll have a far more cohesive design and a more considered garden than if you just went to the garden centre and started planting willy-nilly. So come on let's have a look at the design. In the next episode in the series I'll be giving you even more details on the design but for now, here's a sneak peek. The berry trees have arrived and I've just plopped them into a bucket to give them a quick soak before I start planting them in the rewilding garden. And I just want to take a moment to talk you through some of these species. Now these are all native as in found here in the UK. So we've got things like Scots pine, Douglas fir, we've got European larch, we've got a betula which is a birch um, and a whole heap of other trees in there and I'll provide some more detail next on those. Some of these are going to grow humongous and you wouldn't believe it from looking in here but like this one here uh, it's probably going to grow to about 30 meters in about 30 years so this is like long-term planting but the benefit of using trees in gardens is that they lock up carbon when they're growing so by introducing these 10 specimens into the garden i'm going to start to save and lock up some of that carbon provide an environment for wildlife provide o2 to the environment help slow down flood water rainwater the benefits are almost immeasurable um, and you can do loads of research and find a 
suitable tree for your size garden. So don't just look at these and think, gosh, Garden Ninja, you're planting huge trees. There are small trees that you can use in tiny gardens that have the same benefits as these on a smaller scale. I'm going to be following the progress of this wildlife garden over a series of videos as it progresses this year. So if you've liked this video, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel where there are loads more garden design, hints, tips and hacks to help you make your garden awesome. I've been Garden Ninja, happy gardening.